It's been a long Christmas month. The year is finally over, and we're getting into our last tutorial of the year. And first of all, I want to say how thankful I am for you guys watching my videos and for your support throughout the whole year and hopefully throughout the next year. And this year, we're gonna go out with a bang. So, of course, we're gonna make fireworks. So let's get comfortable, let's get our coffee in our hands, and let's jump in to the last tutorial of 2022. So I'm gonna start off by showing you how to make the firework. And we'll start off by making a platonic, then we can make a rectangle spline here, and then we can make it editable, turn close spline off and then we can just delete these two points right okay so now we need to fix the anchor point and there's a quick way to do that you just press shift c and you type center axis and this one center axis 2 and now we have centered our axis all right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a cloner. We'll put the rectangle spline, let's just call it spline. And we'll go into our cloner. We will put it to object mode and we will put our platonic inside of the object. Okay, so now we need to turn it around. Let me just see which angle it is. Oh, first of all, we need to set this to vertex. So we are actually cloning on all of the vertices or the points. And then we'll go to the transform tab and then we can turn them around to 90 degrees. So they're pointing out and being pointy. And then we can go and move them out with our C value here. Then I'm just gonna hide my platonic and I'll just do it like this. So there's a little bit of a gap in the middle. Okay, so now we have our setup. So let's group this, call it spline and we'll go and create a force field. And in this force field, we're going to put our cloner and we're going to put it as a spline object. All right. Then we're going to set it to change direction and that should be it. Okay. So let's turn off our field force and let's go and create a emitter. And this emitter, we can turn to 10 by 10 centimeters. And then we need to turn up these angles to the max. So we get particles going in every direction. And I can actually show you if I just pull it up. You can see we're making a big sphere of particles. And that is what we want. So in the particle tab, we're going to turn these numbers to 10,000. Both of them. And then we're going to set the stop emission to one frame. So we're only emitting on the first frame and we get this big blast. And that's looking nice. Okay, so we'll go down to our speed. Let's just set it to 15. That should be fine. So we get this little blast here. And that should actually be it. So if we turn on our field force again. Oh, I can see that I turned my spline the wrong way around. So let me just quickly fix that. So let's go in here. Let's turn to minus 90 instead. 
and that should be so much better. Yeah, exactly. So another thing we need to do here is go to our emitter again, and we need to turn the variation to 100% on our speed. And as you can see, we are stretching our particles out now. So let me just hide our cloner, and let's hide the field force, and let us just see what we have got here. So we're getting most of our particles in the Y and X plane, but we're not getting that many on the C plane. So one way to do it is just duplicate our emitter and then just turn it around 90 degrees like this. And as you can see, now we have roughly the same amount of particles being emitted. All right, so this is gonna be the start of our particle explosion. So the next part we need to add is a turbulence. So we'll go up here to simulate, forces, and we'll go to turbulence. And this turbulence will just set to 25. And let's just see what happens. All right, so a lot is happening here. Let me just turn it up so we can see. Okay. That's looking wild. So I'll just turn it down a bit. Maybe a little bit better. I think we need to be at 25% maybe. And then 10% in the scale. Yeah. As you can see, we're getting these nice strains of particles being emitted. And we can even go in here to our platonic. We can set it to Bucky. So we get loads more lines. Yeah, this is looking really nice. So another thing we can do is just go down here, give them one more zero so we have a million particles on each and that way we'll really be able to see what our particles are doing so i'm just gonna turn off my grid here and my world null and my horizon so you guys can see it even better okay so we need to make it a little bit more fun so we can go up to forces again and we can use a friction now. And this friction is just going to give us a little bit of friction on our particles. Let me just turn it up. So what we're seeing here is if they're not moving that fast, they're going to be stuck. Or then they're going to get some air resistance. And it's looking a bit too wobbly right now. So I'm just going to turn it down again to maybe 10. And my friction, I'm just going to take it off a bit. This is much better. And I actually don't think that friction is working for us right now. I think we should definitely just go into these emitters and then just turn up our speed. Yeah, that's much better. So we get more violent explosion. That's so much better. Okay. Let's turn up our turbulence again to something like 15. That is good. And I really like how it makes these weird like paint, paint splotches in the middle. Really like this look. All right, so this is the base setup of the particle explosion. And we want to add onto it now. And we're going to do that in so many different ways. So one of the ways we can do that is actually by going and making a new emitter. And this emitter, we can just stop it here. This emitter, we're going to go to include panel, and then we're going to set it to include in the mode. And as you can see, we are getting a big sphere now because none of our forces are actually interacting with our new emitter. So let's just turn off all of these things we had before. So we're only looking at the new emitter. And 
one of the things I really want to do with this is go and make a turbulence again, but we're also going to make a friction for that one. So I'm going to go into the include mode and I'm going to pull these in right here. And I'm also going to go to these two first ones and also set them to include and pull the field force in and pull the turbulence in. So let's just see what happens if we pull the scale up to 10% and the strength, let's just set it to 25. Let's see what happens. All right, it's really doing a lot here. So let me just set the scale a little bit higher here. Yeah, that's a bit too high. Just gonna set them strength amount down again. That should be better. And then I'm just gonna pull up the strength on our friction. So let's turn everything on again. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a core down here. And it just adds a bit to the overall explosion. But I want to make this core a little bit bigger. So we're going to go into our particle settings. We're going to turn up our speed again. Let's just play it from the beginning. So it's starting out as a ball. And then we get these spikes coming through. And it really looks nice. Okay. So I'm just going to turn down the friction a little bit. So we can get the particles going a little bit more. Maybe 40. That should be good. So the last thing I really want to do now is make them disappear. Because fireworks don't go on forever. And they actually disappear at some point. They have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to simulate again on the forces. And I'm going to make a destructor. And this destructor is just going to be put inside of all of these emitters in the include tab. I'm just going to pull it. Oh, I can't pull it in. Well, we're just going to pull it into all the emitter slots here. And as you saw, it just disappeared. It was there for one frame and then it disappeared. So we need to go through the destructor. We need to set the randomization to 100 of the randomness, 200. Then we go to frame 60 and set it to, let's say, 40. That should be fine. So, so what is this actually doing? Well, at the first keyframe, we have it at 100%. So it's deleting all of the points at random by 100%. And that, what that actually means is that nothing gets deleted because there's nothing that can be deleted at 100%. But if we go to 99, we're starting to delete our particles randomly. So what we're doing, we're actually just creating a threshold on how many particles that can be deleted randomly at a certain point. And we're just pulling this down as we go along and more and more particles are going to be deleted as we go through the timeline. I can even pull the first keyframe to like 45, and then we'll have a lot of particles, and then everything is just gone. So we can have this nice looking loop. I'm just going to hide the destructor. So you can have this nice loop of fireworks show. <laughs> And it looks really nice. So that was just one method of doing this firework. But you can get so many results of just this little setup here. So if you just turn off the second emitter we made, you can see we still get these nice beams here, but now they're just disappearing. So it's a different firework, right? And we can even make it more custom. Because here in our platonic, we have different types of spread. If we set it to hexa, we'll get it from each corner instead of a sphere. 
and we can set it to a tetra so we get this triangle looking thing or this tripod thing even and we can go down here and choose another octa it's a good one that gives us like cross even and we could take a dodecahedron that makes like more of a yeah common fireworks star i think and we can even pull up our turbulence to like 100 pull up the scale so we get a whole nother look and as you can see it's it's really looking like a magic spell now so this setup is so versatile for making these weird but also crazy good fireworks so this effect is just such a fun one and it's all about exploring procedural setups so if you want to render this i'll quickly show you how you can do that we can go and create a tracer and this tracer will just put all of our emitters inside of and we'll press limit from end and we'll set it to two and then i'm just gonna turn off my emitters here so we don't see them and as you can see we have a lot of splines here and these splines are actually the length of the speed of the particle so if you see these small splines here are not moving that fast but these ones out here are moving fast so you're actually getting motion blur with all of your particles so that's pretty neat so one thing you can do to actually render these splines is just to make a hair object a hair material and put it on your tracer and then i think you should be able to render these as hair yeah exactly so you can render them as hair objects if i just go in here push a little further so this then i can go into my hair and we don't need the specular we don't need the thickness and we'll just make it a gradient from yeah we'll make these a nice you can looking yellow and a nice looking orange and the thickness we can actually go to the thickness and then type in um, 0.1 for both the root and the tip so it's the same size and if we press render here you can see we have some nice looking sparks and if you're on redshift you can go and right click on this go to render tags redshift object tag and then you can go to this curve tab here select hair strains and it's simply the same as in the standard cinema so you can see if i press render here we have the same hair strands set up so I can also put it to 0.1 and we'll get the same length of our hair strands. And then we can go and make a redshift material. We can make a standard material and we can put it on our tracer. Then we can go into our shader graph here and then we can search for random hair color. And this random hair color is really good at randomizing colors. So we'll just put it into our base color here. We'll set our color to something different, like a yellow. And I'll just turn up the hue amount, turn up the saturation amount. And I can also turn up the value amount. And the value amount is just how light and how dark they're gonna get all right so if we put that on as we just did we can see it in action so i'm just gonna move to a frame where we can see something here then i'm just gonna go and render it so as you can see we're getting different kind of hues of the yellow 
and we're getting some that are more white and some that are more black. So that is how to shade your particles. So that was it for this year on my channel and I hope you liked all the videos I produced this year because I really enjoyed making these videos for you guys out there. And a big thanks to all the people that wrote to me with suggestions to tutorials and all you guys that wrote to me and wanted help. I was glad I give the extra little mile of helpful information. So at last we are finally hitting 9000 subscribers. And if you could do me the favor of subscribing so we can hit that milestone this year and maybe even hit 10,000 subscribers in January. So it's the last video of the year and I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you in 2023.